I now hand the conference over to Mrs. Nishit Solanki from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on PI Industries Q4 FY22 earnings conference call. Today, we are joined by senior members of the management team, including Mr. Mayank Singhal, Executive Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Rajmi Sarna, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Mani Kantan, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Prashant Tegre, CEO of Domestic Business, and Dr. Atul Gupta, CEO of Exports, CFN uh, Exports. We will begin the call with key perspectives from Mr. Singhal. Thereafter, we will have Mr. Mani Kantan sharing his views on the financial performance of the company. After that, the forum will be open for question and answer session. Before we begin, I would like to underline that certain statements made on the conference call today may be forward-looking in nature, and the disclaimer to this effect has been included in the investor presentation shared with you earlier and also available on Stock Exchange website. I would now like to invest Mr. Singhal to please share this perspective with you. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yes, so welcome and good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for your participation in today's call. Last year, we began with a new fiscal under the cloud of COVID second wave, faced significant operational challenges due to very high infection rates in several months, followed by unprecedented supply chain challenges coming from China. And finally, Russia and Ukraine conflict further adding to the chaos and resulting in rising input cost trends apart from supply chain disruptions. While with this backdrop of the overall business operation environment in 2021, I'm very pleased to report that PI team has done an excellent job in continuing its growth momentum on revenue and EBITDA during the Q4, and also for the full year 21-22. The expansion came in despite of, of course, the challenges and high base of last year, both in domestic as well as exports, rising trends in input costs, I thank all the PIT members for the winning spirit and all our business partners for the continued support and trust in our relationship. Now, in the CSM export space, action on new inquiries continue with a significant number of inquiries coming from non ag and space of electronics and pharma and other areas. During the last fiscal year, we acquired eight new customers. There is a rich pipeline of 40 plus products at different stages or scale up, of which more than 20% are from non ACCAM products. We are targeting to commercialize six to seven molecules in the current fiscal 23. We have also stepped up our capacities during 22 with two multi product plants fully commissioned, including chemistry building blocks for monomethyl hydrazine, commissioned in various technology initiatives to improve capacity throughput of existing plants. A domestic performance. So the quarter was driven by favorable agroclimatic conditions. During the rubber season, supported by price hikes affected by key products, we undertook successful launch of one of our new insecticides for rice and three specialty fungicides focused on horticulture and rice. We have also successfully launched a number of new brands in the horticultural segment under Givagro, and we are excited by the whole slew of products recently launched and are going to be launched shortly. <coughs> this raptor, an innovative insecticide launched for rice, the SEPTA has a unique mode of action to control brown pond hopper effect in the rice crop. We are launching two patented insecticides, Dinota Ace, and another broad spectrum insecticide for the crops of chili, cold crops, etc. Proven in a herbicide of a cotton to be launched this quarter, along with Dinota Ace, will have us as one of the most comprehensive crop protection solutions for cotton, with an estimated of 120 lakh hectares under cultivation in India. An innovative nematicide, pectin, a broad spectrum fungicide, both targeted horticulture segments are being launched in the current fiscal. We are witnessing high sowing in the upcoming kharif with acreage across pulses, core cereals and oils and mark as an increase. Given a normal forecast for the monsoon, the trend is bound to pick up as we reach the end of the summer. Although reservoir levels are above the annual average for this time of the year, we are witnessing low pre-monsoon showers in northern and central India, which combined with the usual heat wave could influence cultivation. As mentioned during our previous investor call, we have refreshed the PI compass to set a clear direction and mission for our future growth. For the purpose of reimagining a healthier planet, 
our vision to lead it with science, technology, and human ingenuity to create transformative solutions in the life sciences. We're now cascading purpose vision with our spiky capabilities and value proposition across different levels of the organization to drive to a bigger sustainable growth in the near future. Given the combined thrust from the lifting of the pandemic, induced lockdowns globally, and massive injection liquidity by the central banks to post intense phase of pandemic, as with commodity prices globally being formed, besides the Make in India program and continued supply chain disruptions in China, combined with government-focused efforts to maximize exports of value-added products will ensure profitable growth of the chemicals sector in the years to come. The domestic segment also enjoys solid tailwinds on record prices and exports let growth. Encouraging farmers to adopt modern crop protection techniques for maximized productivity being the other. Our business outlook remains robust and confident in living 18 to 20 percent growth, plus continued improvements in marginal returns. For the current fiscal, we see further risk of raw materials increase in inflammatory trend. Although it is a target to mitigate the risk by pricing optimizing product mix as well as driving operational efficiencies. Diversification into agencies through inorganic often remain the top of the agenda apart from technology scale up. We are evaluating various MA opportunities both in India and outside India to zero down on a few to meet our objective of creating a sustainable different value proposition. Last but not least, we are proud of our industry and customer accolades. As announced earlier, during 22, we are emerged as one of the top quartile in the very first S&P Global Sustainability Assessments with 82 percentile industry ranking. We also won the Heritage Company of India at FIKI at 75, Chemical and Petrochemical Industry Award, amongst other recognitions. With that, I would like to thank all the stakeholders for their contribution. And I would now like to hand it over to our CFO Money Panton to take and share the highlights of our financial performances. Over to you, Money. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hunger. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us on the call today. I'll be summarizing the financial highlights of the company for the fourth quarter and for year ended 31st March 2022. Please note that all comparisons are on year on year basis and refer to the consolidated performance. During Q4 FI22, we reported a revenue of Rs. 13,952 million, a growth of 17% over the same period last year. This was driven by solid growth in export revenues by 11% to 11,142 million and 47% gains in domestic revenue to Rs. 2,810 million. I'd like to highlight here that we have grown on a high base of Last year, where the domestic revenues grew by 11% and export revenues increased by 47% in Q4 FI21 over the previous year, year YOI. Revenue growth of 17% was driven by price increase of 7% and balance from volume growth. The trend of elevated input costs continued during this quarter. Although we effected partial pass through by increasing product prices both in exports as well as in domestic. Our gross margin increased by 196 basis points in Q4 April 22 to 44%, partially due to cost pass through and favorable product mix, which negated the impact of rising input costs. EBITDA increased by 34% to record rupees 3,056 million for the quarter. Cash generated from operations before tax during Q4 FI22 of rupees 2,640 million. Profit of a tax improved by 14% to rupees 2,044 million in line with planned effective tax rate. Let me also cover the annual performance for FI22. Revenue was rupees 52,995 million, a growth of 16% over FI21. This was driven by solid growth and export revenues by 20% to 39,902 million and 4% gain in domestic revenues to rupees 13,093 million. In domestic segment, we have grown on a higher base of last year, where the domestic revenues grew by 39% over the previous year on a YOY basis, including the impact of ISAGRO acquisition. 
revenue growth of 15% was driven by price increase of 3% approximately and balance from volume growth. Operating expenses increase of 24% is mainly attributable to sharp increase in sale prices leading to increase in utility costs, comma, one-time expenses pertaining to strategic initiatives and COVID-related expenses. EBITDA increased by 13% to rupees 11,460 million for the year. However, there was a moderation in EBITDA margin which reduced by 59 basis points on year-on-year -year basis. Profit of tax improved by 14% to 8,438 million in line with planned effective tax rate. Our balance sheet further strengthened during the quarter. Network increased by rupees 7,780 million to rupees 61,204 million. Net sales to fixed assets ratio improved from 2 to 2.06 from 1.89, while total capex for the year stood at 3,204 million. For the forthcoming year, we estimate a capex of around 5,000 million. Inventory level was maintained at similar level as last quarter to avoid any supply chain disruption and meet customer supply schedules and continued operations. Trade receivables has remained relatively flat at 69 days BSO as on 31st March 22, this up with 68 days as on 31st March 21. Table in terms of days of sales has also remained flat at 64 days, this up with 63 days as on 31st March 21. The company maintained a strong liquidity position, the surplus cash Net of borrowing, uh, ECB borrowings of 21,642 million, including TIT proceeds. That concludes my opening commentary. I will now request the moderator to open the forum for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Tarang Agarwal from Old Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening. Two questions on my side. Um, in your presentation, there's, uh, you've mentioned that uh, you know you've developed a intermediate uh, at a pilot plant through a continuous flow chemistry process. It will give us some sense in terms of uh, you know what are the benefits of this technology in terms of time, in terms of cost uh, versus the traditional technology uh, used to manufacture this intermediate, and how how. How probable is it that you'll be able to scale it, uh, uh, you know, at a factory level? That's number one. And how pervasive would it be? How big could it be? Because my sense is you would have specific equipment um, uh, for this. Uh, the second is, uh, you know, the net sales to fixed asset ratios moved up uh, quite meaningfully uh, in this year. How should, is there a benchmark that you're looking at? How should we see this going forward? Thank you. That's it from my side. So I think let me take the question on the flow technology. Every, obviously there's nothing that is that new to the global industry. It is something which is still under works and has been in works in certain other areas. Obviously the application in certain specific areas are, are new, which is what we are evaluating. Clearly, there is a good enough, strong enough case to create some value benefit, which we see, basis of which the experimental data convinces us to look at commercialization of the same and bring that value added proposition. I think that's the best I would like to mention for now, given the technology's uniqueness and our ability to use and apply from a IP and intellectual standpoint. So obviously, the company is looking at from there. Scalability will obviously has a future. And once we learn more, we'll be able to put a lot more through it and understand it better. The next question was about the asset. Yes, net sales to fixed asset ratio. Yeah, so uh, Perun, uh, you know, we are already now operating at uh, 
more than 2x, okay, in terms of asset earn. And I think this is given the nature of our industry and intensity of uh, asset. This is a reasonably good ratio. However, having said so, there are continuous efforts being put in both on our research side in terms of improving the processes of various products that we are producing at commercial scale in order to improve the time cycles, in order to improve the throughput of these plants. There are uh, clear targets, uh, you know, set in the beginning of the year for all these molecules. So we are we are working towards further improving that. And yes, I mean, uh, product mix is another factor which which plays out uh, when we work out this uh, asset turn. So on both the fronts, efforts are continuously made at our end so that we can improve the overall, uh, you know, asset turn and overall capital capital efficiency of the business. Is there a benchmark that you all look at, or it's a very case-to-case -case, uh, situation? Well, to be honest, we are already, you know, kind of exceeding the benchmark. But generally, in this industry, 1.752 is considered to be a reasonably good benchmark. But as you know, we are already uh, doing better than that, and therefore, wanting to set our own benchmarks. And every year we are expecting to work, rather setting internal targets to improve 10 to 12 percent. Again, this varies from product to product. Every product has different complexities. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, first question on the, the growth outlook uh, on the CSM side. Uh, now, we commercialized nine molecules last year. Uh, you mentioned that, uh, you know, we are looking forward for six to seven molecules more. A uh, couple of quarters back, we did highlighted, uh, you know, electronic chemicals being sort of, you know, picking up and uh, we are ramping up on the non chem side here as well. Uh, so, uh, just want to understand whether 18 to 20 percent is because you know there will be a pricing led inflationary increase here as well. So, this 18 to 20 percent, how should one look at this number? Uh, probably, you know, break up of volume or realization here. Yeah, so I mean, you know, this price volume, you know, in a, in a short to mid term, it as, as we have already explained in past, the, there is always a lead in lab in this industry. But over a period of time, these prices are all always inflationary. In fact, are always factored in in the demand, you know, in the pricing and in the demand. But having said so, you know, this 18 to 20 percent growth that uh, we are indicating, I mean, it is. I would say almost similar kind of growth we are expecting both on export side as well as on domestic side. We are even on domestic side we have a very good visibility in terms of scaling up some of these recently launched brands and the kind of new products that we are launching. So yeah, on export side, I mean mostly it will come from the volumes because most of the price sectors or escalations are already factored in. I mean, we certainly cannot sitting today imagine what kind of further inflationary increases are on the way, but so far, whatever inflationary changes have come in last, I would say, six months or so, those are already kind of factored in in the pricing of these products and for new, new campaigns. So, considering that, we are taking this 18 to 20 percent growth, which should more, mostly come from the volume. Sure, sir. Uh, that's helpful. And uh, just secondly, on the, the overall RM inflation side, uh, in our presentation, we do mention, uh, you know, we have been taking uh, price hikes there uh, to pass through the RM inflation. Uh, at at current juncture, uh, is large part of the inflation uh, across, you know, the both uh, the segments is already passed through? Or probably it will take another maybe quarter or so, and you know uh, another just adjacent to it uh, the channel inventory on the domestic side. How is the situation there on the ground? Yeah, so the major part is uh, already passed through, but yeah, there are um, several products because again there is always a lead and lag. 
some campaigns are running some campaigns have to start and so in this kind of a scenario for some campaign products you have some inventory for some other products you are buying inventory so depending on uh, different scenarios if i see overall i think significant part of this has already been passed through but yes there is still room uh, and scope for passing through for the remaining products which will happen in next quarter Sure. So there should be a positive bias on the overall margins there. Yes. Do you have any other question, please? No. That's it, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishnu Kumar from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Sure. Thanks, sir. Uh, sir, in the past you had told that many of the CSM contracts we have more like a, a per kilo margin or a per ton margin uh, is what we operate with. So any costs generally get passed through. Uh, but uh, this inflationary scenario, we have maintained top line growth. We also expanded margins uh, slightly counterintuitive though, and in terms of our past understanding, uh, when uh, because if per kilo margins remain the same, the margins should probably come off a little. So if you could explain to us what is different uh, in the past versus now. No, it is same as what we have explained and what we have uh, achieved. These differential not necessarily come from the increase in the you know given products and their margins. You know, change in product mix also contributes to the overall margin, and that is also important factor which has played out. You know, over the period or over the year or two years, there is a change in business mix. between um, you know domestic and export and within the business or within the uh, segment there is also change in product mix certain products which are at early stage of their life cycles have uh, obviously they have better margins compared to some of the products which are which are little down the life cycle of their product portfolio so yeah i mean there are the overall understanding is the same as you just uh, mentioned that there are transparent costs which are very much shared with uh, our business partners and very clear understanding on um, uh, you know uptrend downtrend these are passed through so that the margins in the products are maintained or there is no question of uh, you know in in a given scenario kind of increasing margin that's not the kind of situation and not the understanding Also, any any intermediate where you had uh, in the past you were mentioning that you were developing some intermediates at your own either or MMH those are contributing to the margin delta is that to that be a, a answer to the question? No, that that's not the case here and in this overall big picture that doesn't make uh, a significant impact in any case. It is mainly driven by the change in product mix, which which helps. Or is there any any thoughts you can give uh, of our CSM exports? How many product groups would uh, or in terms of contribution? What is the early stage molecules? What is advanced stage molecules? Some percentages. Uh, how it has changed in the last few years? Well, that we we won't have right now on the in front of us. But yeah, then we can talk separately about it. One final question on the uh, asset utilization. You had mentioned that we will we 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 could be uh, doing more than what the uh, asset turns that we were historically doing because of certain change in processes. And uh, you uh, you mentioned is that more or less done, or we still have some gap uh, before which we need to start investing a lot for uh, capacities. No, as I mentioned to the earlier participant, that we are operating at a very efficient level in terms of asset turn, but it's a continuous improvement process. I mean, we are um, very effectively uh, working on further improvement on both sides, whether it is process improvement or whether it is even further improving the product mix, so that the overall throughput from the plant, revenue from the plant, margin from the plant can improve. Or so this 500 crores we are investing. How many plants or any multi-purpose plants will be adding uh, this year? I could just. Well, this is you know this is not being spent on one plant or two plants. There are different uh, uh, categories of capex. There is maintenance capex. There is capex towards you know some of the research side and uh, capital efficiency and process improvement side. So yeah, I mean there are different categories of capex included here. 
but yeah it will be more than one one and a half kind of uh, mpp capacity that will create and and yeah this is how it works sorry sir thank you and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of rohan gupta from edelweiss financial services please go ahead Hi sir, good evening and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Sanna sir, you have earlier uh, guided that your asset turn, which you are aspiring to go up to close to 2.2 to 2.4x, uh, uh, you still maintain that with the rising inflationary scenario, and uh, uh, also on our greenfield capacity additions and. Uh, 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 on top of this 500 crore capex plans can you guide us any further capex plans for future yeah so we are working uh, rohan towards that uh, improvement i mean we are already at over i think 2.1 or something and i'm sure that the kind of effort that our teams are making both on research side new products getting commercialized uh product mix improving i'm sure that um, there is scope and we will surely be achieving uh, better returns over the years um uh, in terms of investment in greenfield frankly at this point uh, there is no such plan because we have still scope for expansion at our existing site so therefore uh, we are considering some brownfield uh, projects you know in the current year next year and um, because there is scope for expansion at a uh, couple of our sites existing sites so as in when um, you know we will need uh, some additional area or um, green field yes we will surely evaluate at that point point in time but at this uh, point there is no such plan so sir just to clarify that at our existing facilities you think that how much investment further investment it can absorb and also you mentioned 500 crore capex for the current year right yes so how how much along with i mean in despite the 500 crore for this year how much you think that your current facilities without getting into new greenfield can absorb in terms of money investment well we have uh, you know for next i, I would say next 2 uh, 3 mpps and you know we can still get them at our existing sites we have space in jambuta we have space in uh, one of the sites in ankleshwar uh, we have some other sites available so in that sense there is scope for at least i would say next couple of years of expansion there is no need for us to go and acquire land and start from scratch that is not the kind of uh, scenario we are in at this point uh sir another is on our uh, pharma acquisition uh any 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 lead you can provide us i know that we have been talking about it from last every quarter but i think that there would have been some challenges and delays any anything any visibility increasing there so so no challenges or uh, difficulty we are very actively evaluating uh, some options okay both on cdmo side api side in india outside india so there are some interesting uh, propositions opportunities we are evaluating and we shall certainly announce when we get to a you know definitive stage and so just final from my side i'll get, I'll get back to you um mm-hmm. sir you mentioned that uh, there is enough and uh, very attractive opportunities coming from the non ag space especially in a uh, uh non agri and non pharma space uh, new age chemicals and all uh, you also gave i think some number of 20% uh, revenues coming from non ag space um, can you sir uh, uh, little bit guide more toward is and how the pipeline and i think that you also mentioned that acquired eight new products in the new agri i mean uh, non agri space so what are these product pipelines looking and how do you see that this non agri space going forward in next 3 years what kind of revenue contribution it can have from non ag uh, non ag chemist space if you can give some more elaborated numbers on that so first to clarify rohan that uh, we have never indicated or said that 20% revenue coming from non ag then no that is not the case 20% references 
to the number of molecules that are there in the R&D pipeline. Okay. Uh, you know, we have say close to 40, 40, 40 plus kind of projects at this uh, point in time in R&D and, and a significant number, particularly in last one, one and a half years, significant number of projects, inquiries and projects which have progressed in R&D are from non-active segment. I'll also uh, request my colleague uh, Atul to also, Dr. Atul to also put some light on how the progress is happening on some of these non-XM uh, inquiries in r &D. Yeah, so uh, Rowan, on the, uh, you know, the non-XM segment, we are building a state-of-art, uh, you know, design. And accordingly, the, uh, the R&D infrastructure is also being aligned and created to, you know, start having a right kind of focus on the non-XM molecules. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Okay. The next question is from the line of Pratik Rangnikar from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Okay, sir. Hi, uh, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. I just had uh, one uh, question on the uh, on one of the points that you mentioned in your presentation. Uh, you mentioned that there should be two new process innovations that will be commercialized in FI 23. Could you just provide some color on? which part of the PML item this would impact, what kind of benefit that you can see? Well, it is on products. I'm not sure what you're talking about, PNL item, but it's on products where we've got certain process innovations which are getting commercialized. Yes, we have commercialized one, it'll scale up with time. So that would lead to better costs or uh, more revenue? Yeah. So I think this helps in, this helps in Sustaining some of these uh, businesses that we are in, you know, the moment we get uh, into these, uh, you know, innovative processes, they, I mean, that ensures the long-term stickiness of those businesses, and that is the key driver to get into these, uh, you know, innovative processes. Uh, got it. So this is primarily on the existing products that you have. You're going to make the process more efficient. Is that understanding right? Yeah, one I mean, one of them is existing, and one of them is the new, um, you know, in process pipeline product that we are currently working. Got it. Thank you. Uh, just one more on the domestic part. Your uh, so this in FI twenty two, we've seen that your uh, curry to overall sales ratio, the ratio of curry sales to overall domestic action sales has come down which kind of reduces the seasonality in that part of the business. Would we expect a similar ratio to continue? Or is there some uh, kind of inventory bunching up in 4Q or something that, that that will happen, which will not be there next year? No, in fact, last financial year, if, if you recall, Kharif was not at all good. I mean, even for the industry, given the, you know, um, given the rainfall, the both in terms of timing and distribution and, you know, various other agroclimatic conditions, the Kharif season was not great for overall industry. So I don't think that can be taken as a representative case for every year. Um, there are, uh, although it is quite uh, early, but there are announcements of normal monsoon in the current fiscal there are also announcements of uh, good acreages in for various crops. So at this stage, we hope that uh, Kharif should be normal here, I mean, normal for this season. But I'll also ask my colleague uh, Prashant if he's on the line to kind of throw some more light on this. Prashant? Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Sarma. So, yeah, it's a good question. Look, uh, uh, as we start introducing new products, we are also expanding to wheat crop, we are also expanding to horticulture, so these are all basically more of uh, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Uh, as we start scaling up these products, yes, there will be a little bit of uh, uh, higher scale efficiency in the second half of the year. Having said that, Kalis uh, is going to be still a major uh, season for us. But yes, there will be uh, more spread, I can say, uh, but in the immediate uh, 2022 2023, uh, we will see the major. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Modi from Haitong Securities. Please go ahead. 
yeah thank you sir for the opportunity uh, sir with uh, the 6 to 7 new molecules that you are planning to commercialize are these all from agrochemical side or this would include non agrochem also yeah mostly uh, from agro i mean out of 7 i think four or four or four products four or uh, yeah four products are from agrochem and uh, three from non agrochem okay sure and uh, in your commentary when you mentioned that you are seeing good amount of inquiries coming in from non net ecm site uh, is are you also you know uh, seeing similar kind of excitement on the ecm side or there is some kind of moderation also happening over there no we we are seeing uh, good traction even in uh, in inquiries of the ecm space Uh, in fact uh, as you can see that you know overall inquiry rate has gone up by 2x yeah so it's indicator of both hotly sure and uh, one more uh, just to understand like you know uh, in such inflationary you know when there is such so much of rapid inflation uh, which impacts the capex cost as well so especially you know when when you have committed a price for a molecule to your customer and post that the capex so what you have planned uh, the cost goes up significantly so in such cases how do you approach uh, is it like you know the roe is kind of uh, taken a hit uh, or uh, we are still able to kind of manage that well generally in the molecules that we work and the kind of uh, you know relationship that we have with these uh, global companies you know these things are very much understandable you know they also understand that if for example if 100 rupee capex is becoming 150 rupees i mean uh, obviously there has to be overall proposition uh, which which should be sustainable for their business partner who is getting into supply so in these kind of uh, business scenarios we sit together we uh, very transparently discuss deliberate on the situations and and these things are very much uh, considered from their side so if, if there is and generally you know what happens that it is not that um, uh, we have done the contract and then we get into um, the capex um, you know spending uh, both things happen together okay there is a and understanding broad understanding then we start uh, budgeting the spending and if there is some change in the budgeting i mean we very transparently discuss with our business partner who i mean in and, and most cases they consider these uh, changes given the kind of scenarios that we are in and these become part of the revised plans and revised pricing structures sure and uh, what should be the tax rate that one should assume for next two years money yeah uh, and effective factor of 18 to 19 percent we can assume for okay okay sure so thanks a lot sir that's helpful thank you the next question is from the line of sumant kumar from motilal oswal please go ahead yeah sir can you quantify the margin expansion you were talking about and what are, what was the reason for the margin expansion the second question is the capex for the fy23 and 24 So capex, we have guided close to 500 odd crores for uh, fy23 and it is little early for us to kind of um, you know indicate number for next financial year but yeah i mean tentatively we say that 350 400 crore is what uh, the kind of rate that we are currently thinking but yeah i mean the more finer number would be known maybe later in the year uh, your earlier question in terms of margin expansion so margin expansion we are i mean in the kind of scenario that we are sitting today uh where it is difficult to kind of uh, you know predict that what is the kind of cost trend that we are going to see both on uh, raw materials and you know fuels and other conversions it is it is really very difficult to put a number that whether it is 100 basis point or 200 basis point but what 
kind of visibility that we have today is that uh, there is certainly going to be some operating leverage with the kind of growth that we are talking, 20% growth. And therefore, I mean, we have a good, uh, you know, headroom to improve margins from the current levels. That is one. Secondly, in the second half or second half of last year, okay, uh, we have uh, commissioned at least four new products, commercialized four new products. And you can imagine that in the initial commissioning time, there are, uh, you know, inefficiencies and all those things. So we expect that in the current fiscal, we will be able to certainly improve on those processes, costs, and therefore, there is, uh, you know, some room to improve overall, uh, you know, gross margins and also uh, because of uh, operating leverage, EBITDA margins. But at this point in time, I'll, I'll try not to put some number on it. So, can you uh, give the breakup of 500 crore we are talking about CapEx in CSM and domestic uh, business? And how many plants we are putting up? Well, it will be mostly in the, in the CSM space because we hardly do capex in our uh, domestic marketing distribution. So this 500 crore is for the NTP plant? Pardon? The 500 crore for CSM, how many plants we are installing? No, I already answered this question, my friend, to the earlier participant that there are different, um, you know, sections of this capex for example there is capex for uh, you know maintenance there is capex in our research and development center there is capex in some of these new technologies we are developing for future so it is not that all capex is going for building a multi product plant or capacity no that's not the case but thank you so much mentioned to the earlier participant, uh, yes, uh, capacity to do the tune of one to one and a half multi-product plant will certainly be there. That's what we are building as part of this. Thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Surya Patra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, sir, first question is on the uh, the potential growth that we uh, we can see uh, through m and beyond the 20% kind of growth indication what we have provided. So uh, could you give some sense on that, sir? Uh, I think uh, the pharma is one angle that you, are, uh, you have been indicating, and I think uh, that is not obviously built into the expectations or uh, guidance. So can you share something there? Well, again, putting a number here is <laughs> difficult, as you can imagine, because it will all depend on the size of the the, the um, asset that we acquire, the size of the business that we acquire. So, yes, but uh, all said and done, this will be in addition to our uh, guidance of 18 to 20 percent. Okay. Uh, so just uh, something slightly more on the pharma side, I think, uh, having seen whatever the kind of uh, deal cancellations, and uh, now we are also uh, getting ready for even uh, international m and so what is the thought process there, sir? Is it like uh, having a base closer to the customer, so that is why the internal, like, international acquisition, that is what is the thought process or something else? Yeah, so thought process is, you know, I think we have uh, in past uh, very clearly guided that what is our aim in uh, hmm. diversification. Hmm. Our aim is that as part of our long-term strategy, we want to kind of build a differentiated business model, okay, which is hmm. essentially, um, you know, in line with what we are doing in XM as a uh, CD, C, uh, CSM player. So we kind of eventually build a differentiated CDMO model in pharma and on this path, we will start from somewhere when we believe that uh, as, as a roadmap to, to get to this uh, ultimate objective, it would always be uh, beneficial for us to have certain assets in India and also some sort of front end in, in some of these developed markets, whether it is US or Europe and, and some of these other markets. So with this aim, we are 
you know, looking at opportunities, uh, hmm. both in India as well as outside India. Okay, okay. Uh, sir, uh, my next question is on the domestic uh, uh, formulation business. See, having seen a growth means this 47% kind of a growth in the fourth quarter, uh, uh, what was the kind of a um, volume led growth and what would be the pricing growth? And generally, sir, having seen, since you have recently guided that, means recently in the sense in the previous, uh, previous question, you have mentioned that. Possibly second half of the year is likely to see a better growth driven by the new launches. That and considering the low base of uh, uh, first half of last year, so is it fair to believe a strong double digit kind of a growth in the domestic formulation side uh, that we should uh, look at? Yes, so we are certainly expecting um, high double digit kind of growth uh, in, in the domestic area in the in this fiscal, fiscal 23. Now, how much uh, happens in the first half or the first season, Kharif season, and the rugby season will also depend on how the seasons are planned out and the, uh, you know, how the, uh, you know, initiation of monsoon happens. But as I was telling earlier, the, 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 very preliminary indications are positive both on the monsoon as well as the acreages growth that we are witnessing. So this looks positive. And yes, I mean, um, since in the first uh, half we had, uh, last year we had a little uh, softer uh, scenario. Uh, we expect that in the in the first season this year we should have reasonably good growth. Okay, and, and this is first part of the question, sir, 47% growth, what has really led that in the fourth quarter? Uh, this was led by both, I think, the introduction of some of the new products, uh, some of the recently launched products like Wheat, herbicide did very well. I mean, we um, significantly improved our uh, volumes and you know acreages that uh, we had done last year this year we kind of uh, doubled and tripled those uh, acreages and the volumes in the wheat herbicide some other products were also launched and and also we we went very aggressive even in horticulture space uh, where we could also register some good growth so all these aspects you know contributed in this uh, growth Okay. And relatively, if you see last year, fourth quarter was also not very high or significant growth. It was, mm -hmm. I remember, close to 11%, 10-11%. Yes. So that also helped. Okay. Uh, uh, on your permission, uh, the last question, sir. Uh, just on the uh, margin, just to understand better on the margin profile front. See, we have consistently and confidently delivered around 19 to 20% kind of a growth CAGR over last five years. But we have remained in the margin, so far as margin profile is concerned, we remain in the range of around 21%, 22% in that range. So uh, going ahead, uh, is it the product mix, the newer product or the uh, pipeline product that will drive the expansion further or it is the efficiency which can drive further or it is the uh, domestic to export mix that will drive the margin for them. So some sense on that would be really helpful. Well, by the way, we grew by close to 35% in last fiscal and I think close to 30% in um, FI20, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that uh, we are growing on a uh, bigger base. Uh, right. But yet we guided for 20% or close to 20%, but we, we as a management, we always believe in exceeding and outperforming our guidance. And those were also very uncertain times, so we were also very cautious as we had indicated. Now, this year we grew by close to 16% on uh, overall year basis. The margins, uh, you know, as we explained earlier, hmm. I overall scenario and probably I'm sure that uh, as an analyst you will also kind of give this uh, uh, credit 
to the management team certainly sir that despite all these adversities around the supply chain and increasing cost trends and also the inefficiencies which come along with the introduction of four five six new products despite all this we were able to kind of maintain i'll not say significantly improve but maintain the margin profile uh, and by the way this year there were also several one offs because of our strategic initiative so these are the reasons that uh, you know we believe that we'll uh, improve upon these three four areas and therefore uh, given the operating leverage that we shall get uh, in the next financial year and help us improve our both margin as well as return profile so sir so, uh, thank you wish you all the best thank you by the seconds i would request you to please limit your questions to two per participant the next question is from the line of s ramesh from nirbal bank please go ahead hello uh, thank you and good evening can you hear me sorry to interrupt sir so your voice is breaking up hello can you hear me now it's not very clear are you here uh, uh, using any your phone sir or an external device? no i am using an answer can you hear me no we you are not audible hello no sir i would request you to please come back in the queue or disconnect and reconnect your number please we'll move to the next question in the meanwhile uh, we have a question from the line of viraj kajaria from securities investment management please go ahead uh yeah hi thanks for the opportunity uh just one clarification this 1.4 billion dollar order book is largely csm order book right it doesn't include the non acam book yes this is this is csm order book okay so the question is you know uh, uh if we would kind of understand the csn revenue growth uh, say between the newer molecules and the older molecules over last say 2 3 years or you know how would that have been and the reason i'm asking this is because uh, if you look at overall order book you know we've been around 1.4 1.5 billion dollar uh, for quite some time now uh and if you look at the overall environment around uh us uh, you know we've seen more and more competitors also getting uh benefiting from this whole uh, contract manufacturing and uh you know transfer of more molecules from the global partners so uh, just trying to understand you know have we kind of lost any you know uh, business or uh, in the old older molecules uh, and how is the kind of market share in terms of increment in new molecules just any perspective you can share on that thank you yes so i think there are two three points in your question so let me try and answer address them uh, first of all yes order book has remained uh, around this number but as we kind of um, you know explained in past we are growing at as i was telling earlier 30% 35% for last few years this year we have grown close to 20% in uh, export now despite this kind of supply we have still maintained certain this uh, order book that is one secondly given the kind of scenario that we are uh, at least for last two years first covid and then you know this global supply chain and now again um, very very um, volatile global supply chain for these recent uh, conflicts and all i think both from the customer side as well as from our side uh, you know everyone is uh, little tentative in terms of committing very very long term uh you know so from our side in terms of capacity from the customer side in terms of uh, you know uh, the global situation should there be i mean should they be completely banking on one country or should they be balancing their overall uh, procurement from more than one geography and all those questions so given this scenario i mean there is little i would say slow down in terms of uh, 
taking very very long term uh, calls and investment calls but that doesn't mean that it is any way impacting the business okay because the business growth is continuing as is is also clearly reflected in our uh, performance uh the second part that is it that these other companies and other indian companies are taking away this growth or something so to be honest i mean the if you see overall specialty chemical area overall uh, indian specialty chemical growth i think there is a very decent growth and many companies uh, have done really well but but i think there is a place for every uh, company here um, there are different uh, segments different uh, models business models different portfolio of uh, products and question is that uh, which model which category which segment is sustainable is 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 the you know point for someone like you to assess but given the kind of business model that we are in for last more than two and a half decades and the kind of business principles that we have around portfolio of being into the early stage long term sustainable kind of model um frankly we are very happy to kind of uh, sustain this 20 25% kind of growth which we believe can be sustained for many years to come uh just one follow up uh you know you talked about having alternative models in the marketplace and some of the players have actually gone ahead and done jvs with uh, mnc partners for patented molecules so you know from your position do you see the overall opportunity landscape uh, uh being lesser now uh, i mean what's your reading of other mnc partners in terms of exploiting this kind of a structure these are we say engaging with us uh you know in the first day new molecule pipeline well frankly i was not able to uh, clearly hear what you were saying with your audio is not very clear so what i was saying that you know we as you rightly said there are the alternative models uh, you know here there are some companies who have actually gone ahead and done jvs with mnc partners for patented molecules so from your position does that kind of uh, reduce the opportunities uh, you know size by to some extent and uh, from your interaction with other mnc partners are you seeing you know what what's their understanding in terms of uh, exploiting a jv structure visa we say uh, engaging with someone like pi for new molecule and scale up well not really i mean we we don't uh... see this as kind of any dearth of opportunities i think we already highlighted uh, in in some of these earlier questions that we are seeing a traction we are rather seeing a traction in the inquiries in the new business opportunities that are coming to the table and in fact i mean these jvs or the patented jvs i mean, I mean all these have been done 10 year back by pi you know in terms of joint ventures with some of these global business partners um tires with these global companies we have been for last 25 years so point is that it is certainly not a loss of opportunity for us or some sort of reduction in opportunities for pi not at all in fact we are seeing a good traction in terms of overall um, inquiry demand scenario business interest uh there is also addition of new customers as you would have read in uh, some of our uh, presentations so i think this is quite a uh, positive uh, scenario at this point thank, thank you. you thank you the next question is from the line of god of chopra from union asset management please go ahead uh hi thanks for taking my question also uh, first question uh, was just an extension to uh, i think previous participants question on the order book so uh, given uh, you highlighted that last two years have been volatile and you know uh, you have been sort of reluctant or tentative to add to this order book uh, but do you think going ahead we will see accretion of the order book because we are already over half a billion dollars in the csm space uh, so do you think uh, you will add to this number yes and again i must answer this in a different way order book may not be the only the way it's good when you're in the initial stages of business 
But I think once you're creating certain class of assets and capabilities for certain products, the stickiness is already created. It's not really driven only by order book. Order book was actually taken as a, if you were asked in the early stages, as a part of risk management for the company. And also that came at a cost. I think now we have a different level of stickiness. So hence order book is not really the driver because if you've got some product that's running five years, 10 years, and with your capabilities and benchmark where you are, the customer wants to work with you and you want to work with him. So that risk factor is now different today for PI compared to what I would say 10, 5, 10 years ago. So therefore we are not really driving this as a way, but we are always looking at the opportunity scale and optimizing it. Got it. Got it. Also, so secondly, uh, is there any contribution from pharma currently in our piece, or you know, if yes, what would that number be? If you can sort of share that. No, that's not a significant number. I mean, um, I think that we guided earlier. Uh, we have uh, scaled up a couple of products, a couple of pharma intermediates, um, but but this is not a very significant uh, number. Okay, and 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 for non agrochemicals, uh, if you can share that number, apart from pharma. Yeah, so there are three, four products. Again, uh, we have commercialized in last one year, but as you can imagine, that initial years, these are not very significantly large numbers. But yes, over the years, we are expecting them to scale up, and then become a meaningful number. Got it. Got it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. You may proceed. Yeah. So uh, the um, first thought is in terms of the uh, initiatives on the non item space, uh, is it possible to share uh, in terms of the uh, investment required and the margin profile and the kind of uh, synthesis you require? Is it Going to be similar to whatever you've been doing so far, or is there any difference? And will it to help you, you know, uh, improve the quality of the business in terms of the asset turn and the kind of synthesis, high value synthesis you use? What are your thoughts on that? So right now, I would answer it with one uh, approach: is obviously we're looking to move up the value curve in terms of capabilities and offering. And obviously, as you move up the curve, the parameters need to get better, and that's really the idea of moving into that space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and the second part is on the uh, domestic business. Um, is it possible to share um, what are the kind of 93 registrations you received last year and how many registrations have you filed for uh, as on date? Well, I think we received two 93 registrations last year. Yeah, yeah. Prashant, you want to come down? Yeah, yeah uh, you're right. We have received uh, two 93 registrations last year and uh, three more in pipeline for the coming year. Two more, is it? Three yeah. more. Yeah. Three more. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, all the best. Thank you. We'll take the next question as the last question from the line of Tejas Sheet from Nippon India. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Uh, so, um, if you are expecting twenty percent kind of growth, uh, so broadly that would be around eleven hundred crore uh, uh, on the second side. Uh, the current capex which we did uh, of let's say around 340 crore, wouldn't that be short of achieving that kind of revenue growth? Well, business, I think if you look at, we did 1400 crore of capex over the last two years before that. Plus, it's not capex driven, it is about, as we said earlier, is about asset improvement. And if you look at about, if you look, if you were to ask me, we have about now 15, 16 plants, a 10% improve in efficiency in throughput creates one half plants. So it is not linear, and that's it. one side we have a focus on asset turn, the other side we want to look at KPEX. So I think growth is clear, but how to continuously optimize by use of technology and efficiency is what we drive, not really just CapEx. As CapEx would not be the right benchmark in the chemical process industry, unless you're into commodity chemicals where, you know, where you can look at capacity and capital as a part of throughput increment, not in the process and technology businesses that we are in the, at the higher end of the value chain. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, the typical contracts, uh, the price contracts or the cost pass on contracts, uh, which we have with our clients, those contracts also include uh, other expenses like uh, logistics cost, or it is just uh, RN cost increase driven. 
Well, each contract is different, but if you look at the bigger picture, logistics is not a very large proportion of our cost given the value addition that we do with our products. Obviously, that would matter when we are high volume, commodity, low value products, that would matter. But that's not a large component of the overall game in the PI contract. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. So thank you everyone. We really appreciate all your support uh, for coming on to this call today and we look forward to a great year and I wish each one of our team members for the, all the very best and look forward to your great support. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of PI Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.